Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and we're going to be doing the Ultimate Archer Build Guide. So if you want to be an archer in Bannerlord, you want to know what skills to use, what background to use, what weapons to use, all that sort of stuff, this video is going to have all of that information. And so these videos take a ridiculously long amount of time to make going through building the character and playing through dozens of hours of the game to get it to the point where I can show it. And of course all of the recording notes and editing and all that sort of stuff. It's just a super long process. So if you could, it'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel and, of course, like the video. And then, you know, if just the cherry on top, leave a real nice comment down in the comment section. But with all that in mind, let's just dive on in and I'll show you how to create the character to give you the best leg up at the beginning of the game. So starting off in sandbox mode, like we always are with these ones, uh, I find just going with the Batanian culture gives us the best start. So you have a 50% less speed penalty and 15% higher sight range bonus in forests. This obviously isn't going to be super huge for every single playthrough, but when I'm playing as an archer, I like to aim for the strategic advantage of having forests to fight in, whether that's in Batanian territory or, you know, basically everywhere else. Every faction other than the Azurai has some forests, so if you can try to get your battles in them, this gives you a significant advantage over your enemies. Uh, and then Town Zone by Batanian rulers have plus one militia production. That really only matters if you're planning on, uh, you know, winning the game and having a bunch of towns, because that way you get extra militia. And the only downside is that you have a 10% slower build rate for town projects and settlements, which I think isn't that big of a deal long term. So I like to start with the Batanians for roleplay and for the uh, special bonus to fighting in forests. So that's the culture I go with. So as far as all of your backgrounds, uh, for picking the best start for an archer, just we're going to be choosing these ones. So you were born into a family of members of the Chieftain's Hearthguard. This one gives you 10 skill levels and one focus point to two-handed and bow and one attribute point to vigor. So when I'm being an archer in the game I like to focus on two-handed weapons typically swords and bows so this one will give you an extra attribute point in vigor which is good because it's going to help us level up two-handed and it's going to give us a focus point in both uh, two-handed and bow. So that's the start I like to go with. Uh, as a child, you were noted for your attention to detail. This one's going to give us 10 skill levels and one focus point to athletics and bow, so one attribute point to control. So it's going to give us that attribute point in control, a focus point in bow, so that's going to be great and help us level up our bow skill. Plus, it's going to give us endurance, which is great because we're going, uh, and athletics, I should say, not endurance. It's going to level up our athletics, which is great because uh, as an archer, you could do it on horseback, but if I'm playing as an archer, archer Archer, not a mountain archer. I like to focus more heavily on athletics and I don't actually use a horse in combat too much. So uh, leveling up your athletics is great and obviously the main focus area of bow is going to be ideal. Like all village children, you helped out in the fields. You also hunted small game. This one's going to give us 10 skill levels and one focus point to bow and tactics and one attribute point to control. So this one's going to be another one that just gives us a great advantage uh, leveling up our bow because we get that extra point for control and that extra point for bow and and we also get the boost to tactics, which is always good. So that's definitely the one we want to go with for that level. As a youngster growing up in Calradia, war was never too far away. You rode with the scouts. This one gives you 10 skill levels and one focus point to riding and bow and one attribute point to endurance. So even though we're not focusing specifically on riding, it doesn't hurt to have that extra skill points and the focus point there. But it does give us the extra point for endurance, which is great because that will help us level up our athletics uh, even better. And then we also get another point for our bow skill. So that's uh, the one we want to choose for that one. Before you set off for a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was you hunted a dangerous animal. And so the only downside about this one is, is it, wastes, it wastes that point for crossbow. I don't know why it does. I wish it would give you the option at least to do it for crossbow or bow because then we could max out our bow right off the bat but at least it gives us the extra focus point or attribute point for control so that brings our control up to five and it gives us a pull arm boost which again i would rather have the option to do that in two-handed but whatever it's fine a lot of people like to use pole arms as archers anyway. So we get the 10 skill levels and one focus point to pole arm and crossbow, one attribute point to control, which is mostly what we care about, plus one to valor, and plus five to renown. So then finally, start at the age of 30, and we can start our game. Again, I like to start with Bannerlord difficulty just because I find the game's a lot more fun if it's, uh, you know, hard, and start the game. So once we're in, you're going to start off with the skill spread that you can see here. So we can see our bow is almost all the way up. We're going to use one of our four points to finish that off. Then we have we have two attribute points still available. Uh, you could do this a number of ways, honestly, right off the bat. I'm going to put them both into control because that's going to bring our skill cap right at the beginning all the way up to past the level 200 spot. 
Uh, and of course, we can already pick our first one. And then we have three of these left. We could use them in athletics, two-handed, uh, riding if you want, tactics. There's a lot of areas you could. I'm going to use two of them in two-handed and one in athletics. So that's going to give us uh, some room to level up early in the game. So starting off, if you followed all of the choices that I've made so far, your skill spread is going to look like this. You'll have three for vigor, seven for control, three for endurance, two for cunning, two for social, and two for intelligence. Our levels are going to be 10 for two-handed, 10 for polearm, 40 for bow, 10 for crossbow, 10 for riding, 10 for athletics, 10 for tactics. And then our uh, focus points will have three in two-handed, one in polearm, full five in bow, one in crossbow, one in riding, and two in athletics and one in tactics. So if you start it off, do all the choices I've done here, that will be the skill spread that you start out with at day one. So jumping to our save where we've played the game for quite some time, you can see that we've leveled up significantly. And so now at level 43, this is the skill spread that I've got going out. Again, like I always say in these builds, even if you're not specifically using those weapons like one-handed or polearm, you can see I'm not focusing on them. I still use them enough to level them up to a point where A, they're useful in tournaments and stuff, so so you're not too low of a level, and B, because otherwise you're just leaving XP on the table. Uh, so we focused on this playthrough, like I usually do in uh, as an archer, primarily on two-handed, bow, and athletics. Those are my main skills there. Then, of course, we, we focus on other things just to make the game better and easier to do. So you can see smithing and trade were two areas that I focus on because you make a lot of XP and a lot of money through those two. Scouting, tactics, leadership, charm, steward, all of these are important for leading armies and such so lots of areas to focus on but we're going to start off with uh the bow skills that i recommend going with if you're going for a traditional footman archer build and so for the first skill i like bow control it says decreases your bow accuracy loss due to movement by 30 percent and bow equip troops in your formation gave uh, gain five percent damage with their bows so this will make your archers more effective and it will help you because you're going to be moving around when you're shooting obviously it'll help you uh perform better in that regard for the next skill i like to go with ranger's swiftness this one decreases the penalty to movement speed by reloading uh, for reloading by 50% and bow crypt troops in your formation gain 3% to their own foot movement speed. Again, this one's just going to make you a lot more mobile and effective with your bow on foot. Then for the level 75 one, I do rapid fire, which increases your bow relo reload speed by 25% and troops in your formation have their bow reload speed increased by 5%. So this one's just another one. It's going to help help you reload faster and make you more effective. I like to focus when I'm doing a footman archer. Obviously, any boosts to power and accuracy are great, but a lot of it's about speed. So if there's ever a boost you can do for speed, because remember, you're not on horseback, so you have to make sure that you can fire your arrows as effectively and quickly as possible if you don't want to just die. Then for the level 100 one, I do Merry Men, which gives you a plus 5 to your party size, which is great. And uh, you have the extra benefit of your governed settlements gaining... 0 0.05 militia per day so that can be useful then for the level 125 i go with strong bows which increases your damage with bows by eight percent and your tier three plus troops in your formation gain five percent damage with bows obviously the troops i like to go with are you know the ones you're going to aim for are going to be over tier three so that's a great boost to have then for the level 150 skill we go with discipline here which uh, allows you to hold your aim 50 percent longer without losing accuracy uh, that's great because obviously you're going to want to make sure you're aiming your shots and this one will give you a little bit extra time to aim those shots without suffering an accuracy penalty. At level 175 I choose Eagle Eye which allows you to zoom in 50% more with bows which is great because that you know makes it that much easier to try to get a nice accurate long shot and it increases your seeing range in the campaign map by 10% so it allows you to plan a little bit more tactically because you don't uh, it's harder for people to sneak up on you with Eagle Eye. At level 200 I go with Renowned Archer, which increases the morale of ranged troops in your party at the beginning of the battle by 10%. Since I'm an archer, I usually play with a large archer army, and so that's going to give us all that uh, morale boost for them. And your ranged troops are 30% cheaper to recruit and upgrade. So not only are your troops uh, morale much higher, but they're also cheaper and easier to upgrade, so that's great. Then for level 225, uh, if I'm going for a traditional footman archer, I'm obviously going to go with Deep Quivers because the alternative is just Horse Master, which allows you to use all bows on horseback. If you want to be an archer that uses a longbow, but you want to do that on horseback, obviously you're going to want to go with Horse Master. But for me, I'll go with Deep Quivers, which gives you plus three extra arrows per quiver, which is great. So if you're carrying three quivers with you, that's nine extra arrows. Uh, and the bow equipped troops in your party each gain one extra arrow. So 
it's a nice uh, nice advantage, giving you quite a few more arrows to deal with. Uh, then finally at level 250, we have Quick Draw, which is just going to make aiming your bow 25% faster, uh, which is obviously uh, another huge benefit. And then finally, the last one isn't a choice, but it's a uh, dead shot, and each skill point above 200 grants you 0.2% speed increase with bows. Each skill above uh, 200 grants 0.5% damage increase with bows. So you can see at level 329, we're obviously significantly, we're 129 levels above uh, 200, so we have a significant increase to both the speed with our bows and the damage with our bows. So that's uh, what you want to focus on for your bow skills. Then for athletics, there's only a couple in here that are real important. The rest are totally up to you. Uh, the first one I like to go focus on is morning exercise, which increases your movement speed by 3%, and foot troops in your formation gain 5% movement speed and so if you're going with, let's say, a bunch of Batanian fine champions, uh, this will make them faster as well as you. Then the second one for athletics is form-fitting armor. Uh, decreases your armor weight by 15%, and tier 3 plus troops in your formation gain a 4% movement speed. Again, it's going to make your troops quite a bit faster, and uh, you can wear heavier armor without having to worry about it slowing you down too much. Uh, then we skip to the level 125 skill, which is braced, and so that decreases your charge damage taken by 50%. Uh, and foot troops in your formation take 50% less charge damage. If you're going with a bunch of uh, non-mounted archers as your army, which I do if I'm playing as an archer, then this one's great because it makes cavalry less effective against you. Then at level 200, we have the steady one, which increases your control attribute by plus one. So this one uh, will just help you level up your bow skill faster because it'll give you that extra point for control. Uh, which makes it kind of an obvious choice for me. And then at level 250, we have Spartan, which increases your stagger damage threshold by 50% while on foot, and it decreases your party's food consumption by 20%. So your party will consume less food, which is just generally a good perk. But this one, I like that it reduces your, uh, or increases your stagger damage threshold by 50%. So when other enemies are trying to stagger you, which will interrupt you trying to shoot your bow, uh, this makes it 50% higher before they can actually interrupt what you're trying to do so it's especially important as an archer it's definitely important for any combat but as an archer you can't do any damage if you can't draw your bow and it's really easier to, easy to stagger you uh so get that extra 50 percent is very helpful so those are the skills for athletics that i like to focus on as an archer for tactics we've got a couple uh the first one is asymmetrical warfare which gives you a 10 percent more damage in simulations in snow and forest and so if you're doing simulated battles and you're trying to stick to the forest or snowy terrains which archers are really good in uh this gives you a big advantage to that uh troops in your formation also gain two percent increased movement speed in snowy and forest terrain battlefields so again if you're trying to stick to the forests and snow where archers have the biggest advantage this just you know compounds that advantage and then at level 175 we've got the skill pick them off the walls this one doubles damage to siege defender personnel with a 25 percent chance and double damage to besieging personnel with a 25 percent chance so this one's just extra useful for either attacking castles or defending castles especially as archers because it gives you that uh, 25 percent chance to do double damage basically in either situation so i find that one to be pretty useful as an archer then as uh we have two leadership skills that i like for this one the first First one is the level 200 skill, make a difference. Uh, your kills have 100% higher effect on friendly troops, battle morale, and archer troops generate 10% more shared experience. So if you're an archer and you're leading an army of archers, this one's going to help you get a lot more shared experience in your army. And uh, obviously it doesn't hurt to have a huge effect on your, uh, your troops morale, which is great. And then the level 225 trusted commander increases the rate of recruiting ranged prisoners by 50%. So if you capture ranged prisoners and you want to recruit them straight in your army especially if they're nice high tier this uh gives you a 50 percent boost to being able to do that and it gives you the advantage of troop experience gain while fighting in simulated battles are increased by 20 percent so just faster leveling up from simulated battles but mostly it's about recruiting the ranged prisoners because that way you can get nice high level prisoners without having to level them up from recruits so those are all of the skills that i like to focus on specifically for being an archer obviously like i said uh, you do, or at least I typically want to have a melee as a backup, and for archer, especially on foot, I find that the two-handed is the way to go, and I also like swords. Uh, 
for a lot of different builds, I like axes and stuff, but for uh, a footman archer, I like having a two-handed sword like a Falks or something like that as my uh, melee weapon. So lots of things you can do, but the, the skills to focus on are the ones I covered here. All of the bow skills and then those couple athletics, tactics, and leadership skills. All of those together make you a very, very effective archer and commander of archers. As far as uh, just some, I guess, information about what you want to do, I like having nice heavy armor. This is just in this place through this is currently the best suit of Batanian themed armor that I've got. Uh, it offers decent protection. It's nothing crazy, but it works. Uh, but more importantly is the loadout. I like to have, like I said, a two-handed sword, and this one's a crafted one. Uh, then you want an excellent bow, and of course the noble bow is one of the best in the game, so that's why I have this one on right now. And then I like having two quivers of arrows. As far as the best bows that you can find in the game, the three best bows for a footman archer are going to be the strong tribesman bow, the noble bow, and the noble longbow. And you can see I've got the noble bow and I've got a noble longbow here in the uh, in my inventory. So those are definitely, if you want a good bow, any of those three are going to be the best in the game. As far as the arrows you can go with, you can see that I've got two uh, quivers of piercing arrows. These ones have the highest damage. You can see down in, in their information there, it says four damage uh, or four pierce for damage, which is one higher than the uh, stacked stepped arrows or the, the bodkin arrows and step arrows, which will give you plus three, I believe each. Uh, but as far as best arrows in the game to go with, the piercing arrows, like I said, have the highest damage, but they only have a stack of 23. If you go with these stacked bodkin arrows or the stacked step arrows, you're going to have slightly lower damage, but significantly more arrows. So it's a trade-off there. Uh, so any of those are going to be excellent options for a really, really good archer. As far as archers that you're going to want to command in your army, if you're trying to build a nice, strong archer-based army, the three best units in the game are, in, in order from worst to best, the Imperial Palatine Guard, which is the top of the regular recruits for the uh, archer skill tree in the Empire Troop Tree. Uh, these are great because they've got solid armor, good weapons, plenty of arrows because they've got two quivers of arrows, and you can recruit a ton of them because the Empire is huge and there's tons of recruits. After them, the second best archers in the game are the Azurai Master Archers. These ones uh, don't have quite as good of armor, but it's still solid enough. They do start with two quivers of arrows. They do have a good bow, and uh, again, they're pretty easy to recruit because just straight down the regular troop tree all the way to the top, the Azurai Master Archer. So... They're, they're pretty solid overall, can hold their own in combat, and uh, they're pretty easy to level up really fast. So those are the second best archers in the game. Then the all-around best archers in the game, there's actually two of them in the same troop tree, so in the Batanian Noble Troop Tree. And if you want to recruit Batanian Noble Troops, you just look at Villages Bound to Castles to get the noble troop tree so that's if you want to get these ones you go to Batania and you go to any castles that are uh, any villages that are linked to castles and the two highest ones in this troop tree are the Batanian Fion and the Batanian Fion Champion and both of them are better than any other archers in the game they have a longbow that's ridiculously good two quivers of arrows they're equipped with a two-handed sword and skill wise they are really good with all of them. You can see two-handed, 220, bow of 260, uh, athletics of 170, you know, lower for the next one down, but still higher than all the rest of the archers in the game. So if you want to have a ridiculously strong archer army, I recommend just a ton of Batanian Fiends and Fine Champions. And just as an example of where to recruit them, so like I said, it's villages tied to castles. So one way to do that is you just hover over the castle and it'll tell you the villages that are bound to it. So Uthalheim and Siordes are bound to Uthalheim Castle, so it's these two villages here. So that's how you find them. But that is everything there is to be an archer in Bannerlord. Uh, all of the skills you want, the type of armor you want, the weapons you want, and the troops you want to focus on. If you do all of that, you can be a ridiculously overpowered archer character yourself and lead an extremely effective army of archers. So that's all for today. Hope you found this video useful or at least entertaining, but uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.